All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So welcome to another edition of In The News. Hopefully you all are keeping warm during this winter weather that's starting to hit some of us. Like, the snow's really coming down outside over here. I'm hoping I get tomorrow off so I can sleep in, and then when I get up, it's going to be Netflix and waffles. No chill, because uh, nobody's driving through black snow and ice to go get any whiff of anything, but more so just Netflix and waffles all day tomorrow. But um, have you guys seen a story about the girl who caused a whole car accident trying to do the Bird Box Challenge? Like, I'm going to post a story or the picture on the side. But yeah, long story short, if you don't know, Bird Box is this movie that came out on Netflix. And it's one of those apocalyptic kind of movies that they've been making for like the last 10, 15 years. And in this movie, and I'm not giving spoilers, so no, no worries, but in this movie, there's some kind of like entity or being that makes everybody get hypnotized. And when they see it, they try to either kill themselves or kill everybody else. So the purpose of the movie is everybody tries to purposely make sure they don't see the being. So people stay blindfolded. And if they're in the house, they have the windows covered up and everything. So you can't see outside. And so the girl in this news story... She tries to emulate a scene out of the movie, and so she starts driving with a blindfold on. Causes this whole car accident. And I'm just sitting here looking like, well, now, what level of stupidity do you have to reach to know that that wasn't going to be a good idea? You know what I mean? You, you, you're, you're taking a car and, and, and attempting to drive it without seeing the direction of where you're going. Like, you're, 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 you're driving a car. A whole car. Like, you should have tried this out on a bike first to see how it was going to go. Like, see if you could have made it down the street without getting hit. All right? As opposed to trying to take a whole car out there you know it's crazy because people will do any and everything to go viral for what all of five minutes for two or three days and then the next sensation comes like people got to use more common sense plus when you're talking about the bird box challenge in my opinion she's already late to the party all of us have been doing the bird box challenge our whole life and didn't even know it all of those nights when you were sleeping you had to go to the bathroom and you didn't really open your eyes because you were like sleeping real good and you didn't want to mess this up or you didn't like the light coming into your eyes so you went to the bathroom with your eyes closed or, or cracked that was a bird box challenge there. You just didn't know. So somebody tell her she was late to the party, okay? Everybody always want to have a challenge about something. Let's have some challenges that have some purpose, okay? Can we have the don't be racist challenge? Stop calling the police on black people challenge? Listen, the only time you need to do the bird box challenge in 2019 is if you have a young child and you got to take them to go get their shots. I suggest you put a blindfold on and tell them to look to the left so they don't know when the needle comes. Other than that, come on. That girl really tore up her whole car trying to... Try, and listen, I bet... I know she had to be recording it. I know there's a video out there. So y'all, if there's a video, please send it to me. Please send it to me. I just want to see how that ended. But anyway, you know, that's crazy. There's a lot of stupid things people do. It almost reminds me of another story I saw. And I don't even want to call the individual stupid, but there's a situation where there was an individual who had two pounds of marijuana and he took an Uber to go deliver it. And somehow something, something went wrong. He left the marijuana in the car and then he called the Uber driver back. Um, either Uber or Lyft, the Uber driver back to, you know, give him back his little two pounds of marijuana and he got met with the police. I was like, you, you took an Uber to the drop off? Like, I'm not trying to tell people how to do crime. Plus with marijuana, I have a different opinion on it anyway, because the crap, the, or the crappy part is, you know, in some states it's legal and you have corporations making all kind of money off of it and everything now. And it is even the cool thing to do. And there's all kind of articles I see all day about how you can start, you know, get your, your startup and everything with marijuana and, and people are still getting locked up for it. But in his event, like if I was him, I would have lied through my teeth on all that. Um, the minute I would have got there and those police would have been like, yeah, you know, you have two pounds of marijuana. What? I don't know what you're talking about. That's no, I'm a spiritual healer. Like that's potpourri. Like that's cilantro. It's like dried up cilantro, um, sage, dried up palm leaf. You know, it's, 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 a, it's an herb. You're supposed to put it in the water and just boil it in it. Yeah. I'm a spiritual healer. That's what that is. Oh, y'all said y'all tested it. It tested for marijuana. Well, I got it off Amazon, so let me just go ahead and get it back. I'm going to return it because I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to definitely give them one star because that's unacceptable. You know, it's nothing worse than when you try to order a product and they don't give you what you order. So I'll just go ahead and take this back if it's no bother, officer. Look, they would have had me locked up in the back of that car. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, Lord. And, and no stars for that Uber driver. You get zero stars. Anyway, and then we have this government shutdown. And the crazy thing about it, because now it's in day 23 going into day 24, and it's not even really an end in sight. Um, you have 800,000 people who are not being paid. You have 800,000 people who have to figure out how they're going to pay their mortgage or pay their rent or pay off their child's daycare or get the groceries or pay off their student loans or pay off their car note or pay off whatever it is that they got to pay off. And I think one of the things we're forgetting is there's a lot of people who are in different kind of loan forgiveness programs where, you know, if they can consistently make the payments on whatever loan it was, usually with school or sometimes credit cards and everything like that, after a certain amount of time, the rest will be forgiven if they consistently make the payments for a certain amount of time. And so now you have people stressing out because it's like, man, if I miss this payment, then I'm automatically booted out of this program and there's that. And now it's all at the hands of the government in which I work for. That sucks. Or people who may be in some of these um, cash value account insurance plans where they have to consistently put in a certain amount every month, you know, because they're trying to think of their retirement and everything else like that. And 
you miss that one payment, that whole pro- all, all of that lapses. You know, that sucks. And so, you know, I think they have to think about the bigger picture of how this is affecting the people. It just reminds me of that African um, parable where they say when two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. And in this situation, the grass is the people, and of course, the elephants are those up top. And, and with this situation, I'm not even really seeing this as being an issue more so of policy. I'm seeing it more of an issue of, of just ego and pride at this point where it's just you, nobody's backing down because listen at this point I've already said my two cents and if I back down now it's not gonna look good for me and vice versa for the other side and I think that's one of the you know the sad parts about it and, and what makes it worse is you're watching them tell all of these unpaid unpaid employees you know well find creative ways to bring in income I'm just like what okay 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 cool you know what I'm gonna rob a bank and bring some backup dancers okay to just be a whole flash mob how about we do that you know, you're going to tell these people, be creative. There's some people who just only know how to do their nine to five, you know, because if that was the case, if there were some people who knew how to do more than their nine to five to bring in enough additional income to support themselves where they didn't need the nine to five, they wouldn't be at the nine to five. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's some crap. That's like telling somebody to jump out of a plane without a parachute and find a safe way to land. You know, some people like you're setting people up as far as, you know, what it is they should be doing. Because of course, with the government, the, the crazy thing is you would think that would be the best job security in the country. But clearly it's not. Um, and so I, I, I just really think that sucks for those who are being affected. You know, there's some people who are really, really just barely making it already. And then even some of the media publications, they, even the, the, the lack of empathy you're seeing. You know what I mean? I saw an article where it was saying the shutdown is showing us that people need to save money. Okay. The shutdown is showing us that clearly you got a lot of nonsense going on up top and it's affecting the people. That should have been argument number one. When you want to talk about people saving money, this, that, and the third, let's be honest. Most of the country's broke. Most of the people who live in this country don't have anything. Most of the people who live in this country make just enough to survive month to month, unfortunately. Why? Because the cost of living is skyrocketing. Wages have not really gone up that much and everything like that. And sometimes we get blinded because we're like, oh, the stock market's doing good when most of us don't even have anything in the stock market. Or most of us don't ha- have enough shares in the market for anything to really have, you know, somewhat of an impact um, when it comes to like, you know, just bringing, bringing in additional revenue and just thinking about the long-term plans. You're watching people's 401ks just get all chopped up every week because the stock market is doing whatever it wants to do. Um, you know, and so I, I just think all of that sucks. Yeah, I feel bad for the people who are, are affected by that. And that's tough. You know what I mean? So hopefully it ends soon. I need them to figure something out. Even if they just do something where they reopen the government and they go back to the drawing board as far as that wall. But they're, they're doing a lot. Um, plus, my issue with the wall... I'm not even going to spend a whole argument talking about the wall, but my issue with that is like, when I think of a lot of the people who I guess end up in the country illegally, half of them just fly in and don't leave, or they drive in, or they come in on, you know, a lot of the people, it's not, there's this whole narrative that they really think that there's just a rack of people just jumping the wall all night, all day, and I mean, just in droves, and that the drugs are coming in through the wall, the drugs are coming in on cargo ships, the drugs are coming in on trucks, the drugs are coming in on planes, as a matter of fact, we just saw a story about the U.S. military person who was smuggling, what, a million dollars worth of drugs into the country? That's our own military. So the, 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 the energy is all over the place. So I need everybody to go to the drawing board and figure that crap out, like ASAP. And in the meantime, you need to open back up the government and let these people get paid. Like, people need to be able to support themselves. People are trying to pay the, you know, their children's college and stuff off. Y'all, y'all messing up. Do better. Make no sense. Shoot. And then, oh, then I saw the bit, I hope it's not true, but I saw the bit where they were even considering taking some of the hurricane and, you know, national disaster relief fund from those who were affected by Hurricane Harvey uh, in the Gulf Coast and in Texas and using some of that money to possibly, um, I don't know if they were saying fund the wall. I don't, I don't think that's true. I'm hoping that's not true because that makes no sense. But um, get it all together. All of that, get it together, please. Um, anyway, moving on. Then I saw a little Uzi Vert. You know, he's been trending because rumors are, or not even rumors, he pretty much put a statement out where he just kind of wants to go back to his life like how it was during, you know, before 2013. He doesn't want to be famous anymore. And so he said he's quitting music. So a lot of people are really losing their minds at the moment. I think in this situation, one, I don't think he's leaving. He'll be back at some point. Because in my opinion, when you're an artist, and if I mean, if you're really an artist, um, you know, when you have that, that, that creative itch, it never goes away. You know, unfortunately, things like the music industry can be so toxic that people just get exhausted because you have to just think, you know, everything from because I I don't know what it is that made him want to leave. But, you know, just looking at the industry, you have the issues with contracts and record labels. And that alone is stressful. I I look at what what happened with Tinashe and I was like, God, just 
Ooh, that's a lot. And not just her, but like a lot of artists. So labels are stressful and everything like that. Sometimes when people already had family issues before they got famous and then they got famous, the family issues get worse. I look at like everything that was going on with August Alsina and, and his family and how he was having a lot of hard times trying to make peace with some of the things that was going on in his family. And he was, you know, he was making posts and stuff about it. You know, people deal with stuff like that. Um, and then really, I think social media plays a huge role in a lot of what's going on. You know, the difference between being famous 20 years ago and being famous now is at least 20 years ago, if you were a celebrity, you didn't feel the full wave of negativity that came from the masses from multiple angles. I mean, back then it was kind of like, you know, if you got a bunch of bad press, you could almost hide and escape from it if you just minded your business and stayed home. You didn't look at the magazines. You didn't go on the major websites and watch the news publication. You just kind of kept to yourself. And maybe when you wanted to address whatever the issue was, you go on Good Morning America and do your little apology speech and be on your merry way. Today, you have social media. And so a lot of celebrities like to try to interact with their fans and followers and, you know, make a post and post a picture of their baby that was just born or post a picture of, of, of them in an outfit. And then you have to deal with all of the trolls on Instagram and on Twitter. And that can be draining. Like, and especially with the, 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 the I'm stuttering like a preacher right now. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> um, especially with a lot of the blog sites that now are on things like Instagram. So something like the Shade Room or, or Ball Alert and all of that. And you know for sure, no matter what post you look at on something like that, there's always going to be a rack of negativity in the comments section. And I think with celebrities, sometimes that's draining. Like if a celebrity posts a tweet like, hey guys, happy Monday, and then F you, your music effing sucks, something, something. I wish your mom would have died and you should have got hit by a bus. And you'd be like, dang, oh, okay. So I don't know what it is that's making him, him run off, but or not even run off, but just kind of take a break. But good, you know, I want to say good for him. Sometimes you got to do what works for you. Sometimes your mental health comes first. Sometimes your peace of mind comes first. All of that comes before fame, because I think fame can be very toxic, um, especially if, if there's too many bad seeds associated with it. When I say bad seeds, I'm just talking about the ills of the industry and the very superficial mentality that a lot of people have when it comes to celebrity culture. Um, that can be very draining for some people. You know, a perfect example, I look at somebody like T-Boss from TLC. If you ever go and, and, and read the commentary that people have about that woman when she makes a post, you just like, why are y'all so mean to the lady? Damn, my goodness. Um, or even people mocking her for the finance, the financial problems and everything that she's had in the past. And I'm like, if anything, you guys should look at somebody like a Tony Braxton or a TLC as an example of what happened in the past. Those are lessons learned so that the artists who are out today can be better off financially and understand the business side of the industry. Um, and, and so again, like I, I just find it interesting. And again, I I don't think he's going anywhere because I, t I just think once you have that itch, it never goes away. That's why I don't like when people try to tell older entertainers to retire or, or fall off or, you know, go. they need to sit down. They need to hang it up. Here's the thing. If all of your life you only did or all you knew was music or all you knew was dance or film or whatever it is that you do, you just live and breathe it. So just because people are no longer watching or supporting you doesn't mean you still don't have that itch to entertain. And I think that's why so many celebrities, um, if they start going on a decline or they fall off or maybe they lost their record deal or whatever happens or they hit their rock bottom, you see so many who turn to depression or not turn to depression, but they become depressed or they turn to drugs or they become abusive or they become violent or be, they become alcoholics or they kill themselves or they, they just get into this space where they're so secluded from everybody that they're in their own world and some of them start having mental issues. Like, you know, all that stuff is real. So I don't know what's going on with Lil Uzi Vert, but you know, let him do what he needs to do to make himself feel whole. But then again, like I said, sometimes celebrities, they say they're retiring and then they don't. Remember Jay-Z, 2003, 2004, the Black Album, that was supposed to be the last one. And I, look, Jay-Z just been chilling, right? He, he just over here doing big giant stadium tours and, and everything else. So we'll see what happens. Um, I like Lil Uzi Vert's music, by the way. It's it's a little dark. It's a little it's a little dark. I have to go and repent after listening to it, but I do like his music for some reason. Um, anyway, moving on. And then I saw that they were planning to make a sequel to Coming to America. Um, all I'll say is this: the only sequel I've ever been waiting for was a sequel to Friday that included both Mike Epps and Chris Tucker. That's what I want. Coming to America, cool, I guess if we get one. But let me get the Friday. That's what I've been waiting for. And now at this point, they're all so much older. I don't even know how they would even be able to pull that off. But that's what I've been waiting for for the longest. Um, I remember when Next Friday came out, and at first I thought it was going to be, you know, a continuation of what they had. But it was a totally different kind of setup, different part of the city, and they had Mike Epps. And I mean, it was still cool, but. I would really like a Friday with Mike Epps and Chris Tucker in the mix. But, you know, I can dream. Dreaming is free. Um, 
And so we'll see. But as far as coming to America too, Eddie Murphy said he would be in it. I don't know if the rest of the original cast would be in it, but that, it'll be interesting to see how they follow up the first one. You know, I'm not always a big fan of, you know, um, some sequels and everything like that, but I, I, I prefer a sequel as opposed to a remake. Like, sometimes I can't stand that they remake some movies. Like, some movies don't need to be remade. So I'd rather they do a sequel to Coming to America than a remake. So I'll take it. And then did you guys see the story about the Hacienda Healthcare where there was the woman? Now, mind you, she's been in a vegetative state for 14 years. By the way, I don't know if... Is vegetative state... Is that an offensive term? If it is, I apologize. But it seems like it would be offensive. But all right. Anyway, um, she's been in that state for 14 years. And somehow... This woman has ended up pregnant and, and has given birth in the home. So somebody up in there, some perverted person, I'm trying to not use profanity today, has gone and, and raped this poor woman and she's given birth. I hope that they're taking DNA of every man that works there. And then the other thing is you don't even know if it's the staff because it could be any of the visitors who come in there. And maybe they just somehow found their way in a certain room and did whatever. But that's some nasty, that's some stuff there. You got to really be on one to go and... and <clears throat> You do that to somebody who's not even there. You know what I mean? Like, what's wrong? Ooh. That's going to be a lawsuit there. That's a lawsuit and a half right there. I hope that family get. They better own that entire Hacienda, whatever it is. I've read that the owner or the person in charge is already fired. But F that. Y'all, Hacienda, nothing. I would See, that's why when my mother gets old, as much as I love her, she's never going to a home. Even as much as she get on my nerves sometimes, I will never put that woman in a home. Even if she goes loony on me. Um, she'll be loony right upstairs like Uncle Pete and Soul Food before I drop her off in, in some home with a bunch of crazy people because I see too many stories where people are being abused and, and everything else like that. There's just no way. Um, God forbid, Lord, let my mother be like together and, and, and into her last years, I pray. My goodness, because that's tough. I, if you've ever had to take care of somebody who is just not well in age, it's a lot. It's, it, it's draining, especially if you have to take care of sick parents. Like I've already told y'all about that in, in the podcast, but goodness. Um, and brighter news uh missy elliott is being inducted into the songwriters hall of fame and she's also the first um female rapper to get this honor as well so good for her i think a lot of people forget that missy writes so many hits for other people she has her own catalog which is already just everything the visuals included and the stage shows but you know she's written and penned so many hits and produced so many hits for so many people so good for her i'm glad that she's getting her flowers while she's here like i said people should get their flowers while they're alive to enjoy them you know nothing worse than putting the flowers on a casket so there's that. And then last thing, I, I posted this on the community page because I was asking if anybody had seen it. But I still think it's such a good watch. And I'm talking about Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix. I was obsessed with watching that during the little holiday break. I sat there and binged through all eight episodes from the two seasons. It's a really good watch if you want to check it out. If you're somebody who's really into music and just the history of things, it's really, really cool. Hopefully they have some more seasons because I would like for them to have an episode about um, hip hop in the Midwest and hip hop in different realms and even hip hop across the diaspora. Like there's so many episodes they can, could have, but you know, it's, it's a really good watch. And I like that they involve the people who were there. I really, really, really enjoyed those first two or three episodes when they're just talking about the birth of hip hop and everything else like that. Cause you know, I'm an R&B head. I can talk to you about R&B all day, but when it starts getting to hip hop, my memory starts getting a little faded. I'm not as um, in the know as I would like to be. So I, I really enjoyed that. Plus that's the, that documentary was like the closest thing I could get to VH1 before the reality shows. Cause I've always said, VH1 used to be such a great network if you were somebody trying to learn from uh, as far as music because they had so many shows like you know they had the behind the music and the before they were rock stars and the where are they now and the the greatest blah 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 hits of the 2000s or the hundred greatest blah 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 and what hint wonders this and they had so many different uh, or pop up video was the show that was my favorite one but you'd have to read so fast that's probably how I became a good reader because that little bubble would pop up on a music video and you'd be like oh in 19 so and so the so and so so and so the music video came out 1985 and then it goes to the next one okay and then this video was shot in another and I'm like dang like boy you had to do that like speed reading remember like when speed reading came out in the 90s and those little infomercials used to come on that was you trying to watch pop up video if you remember that show um so I really enjoyed hip hop evolution anyway um that is all for tonight um, I actually need to do this podcast episode because we're a little behind on the podcast, folks. So anyway, I'm out. Subscribe.